Hey, what's up? Dr. Dave here, Debt One. Um, so today I'm going to nerd out a little bit and I'm going to talk about outcomes-based training and education. I'm going to use this handy uh, visual training aid here, it's high tech, um, to outline a model of obt and &E. So you'll hear me talk a lot about outcomes-based training. Uh, and that's because it's the, the theoretical framework that we use to create all of our training at Debt One. So whether it's the Entrepreneur Operator Training Course, um, the Debt One Elite, the Debt One Indoc, or any of our small teams mastery events, um, we're interested in the outcome, right? The outcome of the training as opposed to the objective or the content, right? And so uh, I'm going to use this model here that I think does a really good job of kind of simplifying what we mean by outcomes-based training and education and I'll give some examples of how we use it or how it could be used and, and what the difference is between outcomes-based training and objective or content-based based training. Um, so here you go, you can see we have a, an arrow here which is just a continuum of time, right? So it's one o'clock here, it's four o'clock here. And somewhere along this line, you have to, the first thing you do in training, you gotta identify your objective, right? So what is it you want to accomplish uh, during that training or during that mission? So we have the objective. Um, once you establish that objective, you gotta figure out how are you going to achieve it, right? So what are the steps you're going to take to make sure that you accomplish that objective or you achieve that objective or you reach it, right? You accomplish that mission. And so of course we call those the actions, the actions on uh, whatever. And so once you have identified the objective and now you've taken the actions on, the steps you're gonna to take to achieve that um, objective, at some point, you got to evaluate your progress. How do we do? Did we accomplish that objective or did we not? Right? And so uh, in military, we call that the go, no go. Um, and for a lot of times for objective-based training, this is where we stop. Okay, this is what we're looking at. So we identify what our purpose was, the steps we take to get there, and then we evaluate our progress. How did we do? And so for the most part, we're really concerned with what? With the go, right? With the go. And so you achieved that objective or you didn't achieve that objective. If you did, you gotta go, you're signed off, you're good to go, you can move on to the next station, the next objective. If you didn't, you gotta go back, retrain, figure out what actions you took, what you did wrong, and fix it to achieve that ob objective, right? And that's where we stop. Um, but I wanna think, when we're talking about outcomes-based training, and we're really focusing on the actions, how you achieve that objective, or how you achieve those actions that get you to that objective, right? And there's outcome, an outcome based on how you do that, right? And that outcome can either be positive, high tech, or, of course, negative, right? So the outcome can either be positive or negative based on how you achieve those actions to get to the objective, right? And so I'll give you an example of what that looks like. Um, let's say uh, 15 years ago, you went out to the National Training Center out in California and you observed a squad or a platoon doing a cordon and search, right? And so what that means is they have identified the objective, their village, they're gonna approach that village, um, they're gonna surround it, set security so no one gets in or gets out, they're gonna break that village down into sections so they methodically search each section trying to find whatever it is they're looking for. Right, So you'd watch this, this squad approach and there'd be a bunch of evaluators who have a checklist of those actions on, those steps. Did they achieve those three steps? If they did, they accomplished their objective, they get the go. They can move on to the next station, they're certified. Let's say they didn't, they get the no-go and they have to go back and retrain, rerun that objective until they get it right. Now let's take that same platoon or same unit and put it in Afghanistan a, a year later. Right, so the same objective, they need to cordon and search a village looking for, let's say, a weapons cache. Um, they approach the village, set security, break it down into sections, and methodically search to find what they're looking for, right? They did all the steps right to achieve that go. Now, what about how they accomplished, or how those actions on were, right? So let's talk about positive. So they did all those actions, they checked each one off, but they did so in a respectful manner. They tried to minimize damage as much as they could. Um, they were, you know, respective of the local customs and culture. Um, and so what are some positive outcomes? Maybe that village is now becomes an asset to them and provides them with information of their area operation and some, some enemy that might be operating in the area. Well, what, what could be negative, right? So let's say they do the exact same uh, objective, the exact same actions, but this time they're breaking stuff. Um, somebody ends up shooting a cow or a goat. Um, they let the, the pigs go free or whatever, right? And so now, um, what are some negative outcomes? That village may now become 
not become friendly, right? So they may have been on the fence a little bit, but they can now support the enemy or actively become the enemy themselves, right? So when you're looking at that, it comes down to the actions. Uh, and we're thinking about the outcomes-based training. Sometimes how you accomplish the mission, how you accomplish that objective is more important than whether you accomplish it at all, right? And so when we're developing training at Debt One, we're really looking at this actions because we're concerned about this outcomes, right? So a couple weeks ago, we did a, um, a Debt One Elite event with an NFL team. And so the objective was to get them to be able to shoot a rifle well enough to hit the target to hit what they're looking for so that they can do some competition uh, and have a good day, right? What does being able to shoot a rifle at a target 15 meters away uh, have to do with their performance um, on the field as leaders, right? Absolutely nothing. So what we did, that was the objective, but we, what we were looking for and the way they achieved that objective that we created, it was so that they would have to utilize the skills that would be necessary or be valuable to get that positive outcome that would help them what, in their NFL season, right? So we wanted them to be adaptable. Uh, we wanted them to be problem solvers. We wanted them to be able to think correctly under pressure. Um, we wanted them to be able to exercise tremendous self-control and will and focus. And all those outcomes were necessary to be successful in their actions to achieve that objective, to get that go, so that we can get that positive outcome, right? And so when we're developing training, we're really focusing on those actions as opposed to just the objective. And so uh, how does that translate to, let's say, a corporate world? And I'll use like an engineering firm or something for an example, right? And so let's say um, you trained your engineers uh, or your lower engineers, let's say they might not even be engineers, but the lowest level in your company, they're able to go out and do an inspection. Let's say it's a $1,500 inspection of um, some type of, of a system or something. And so um, if, how you train them to be objective so they just know how to achieve that objective of inspecting that wall or that item or that fire protection system, um, or have you taught them in a way where they become adaptable, where they become confident? And so um, when they're on that, that $1,500 evaluation or inspection and, you know, the guy is like, hey, man, we also have, a, we're, we have this other project that we're doing, you know, this $250 million developmental project that we're doing. Uh, is that something you guys can help us with, right? And so if you've trained them um, to be adaptable, to be free thinkers, to think on their feet, to think well under pressure, that... Um, employee might be like, you know, yes, absolutely, that's something we can do, and here's how we can help, and here's the process that we have in place to make this happen. Let's talk about it, and we'll get together, and we'll have a meeting next week to get you on board so we can get this going. Or have you just focused on the objective, they know how to do that inspection, and that opportunity presents itself, and they're like, um, you know what, let me give you um, our sales guy's number, uh, and he'll call you tomorrow. Right, and so that's an opportunity that has just gone away. You leave that, that meeting and you may never hear from that person again because he's now moved on to the next company or the next organization, right? And so um, when you create um, training, you really wanna focus on how you're achieving that actions, right? The outcome as opposed to the go or no-go. Now, the objective is important, right? We're not throwing out the objective, that still exists, and you, you know, that's the first thing you identify but we really develop our training to focus on the actions and how you achieve that um, objective as opposed to just achieving the go, no go. Um, so that's outcomes-based training and education. Again, it's the theoretical framework for everything we do at Debt One. We're concerned with the outcome. So you may see us doing some events that look really fun and cool, but you're like, well, what does that have to do with leadership? What does that have to do with sales training? What does that have to do with football? Right? And the answer is maybe nothing, but the way in which, you know, you lift the skirt a little bit, the way in which we're achieving those actions, that's where the outcomes that we are looking for are developed. And we spend a lot of time in making sure our training or our events um, achieve those positive outcomes, right? Because you can always achieve those negative outcomes. Uh, and, and I believe there's no zero sum training, and we'll talk about this in another video. Either you get better or you don't, right? So um, you're either having a positive or a negative outcome. Um, so you really wanna make sure you put a lot of thought in that. Love to hear your thoughts. I know this was a little bit in the weeds. We kind of nerded out a little bit. Um, you know, go ahead and give Debt One a follower if you're not. Uh, and, and let's talk about it. Thanks again, have a good one.